I'm the only player to have made all six now World Championships. It feels bittersweet in the way that I, I quit university to play Smite when I was 18 uh, and now I'm 25 and it feels like I'm still that guy who hasn't like won and it's like what have I been doing for the last five, six years uh, if I haven't even won anything. I think that every Smite player's goal for 99% of them be just to win worlds. And then I think you probably have, you know, a subset of that where it's, you know, win multiple worlds, you know, be considered the best player in your role, stuff like that. But yeah, I would say it's all about worlds. It's like um, everybody works up to a certain moment, no matter what you're doing, whether it's a job or a sport or something, you know, winning the Super Bowl in the NFL or whatever it is. Um, and winning the season four world championship is like, it's what I worked towards, it's what I played the game for, and like I finally did it. And I think it'd be amazing for Mike and I to guide a team of uh, fresh players who haven't won Worlds. I think it'd feel amazing. I mean, it's only my second live LAN ever. I think there'll be the, basically the four years of my life things might uh, accomplish. You know, I just want to, I just want to win a World Championship. Well, in that EU United team, we basically knew, regardless of how our like title defense went, that was going to be the end of that team. We didn't have Ven anymore, who you know we decided to make that roster change, and we knew Baskin wasn't going to play this year. We knew Scream was going to have uh, have to graduate high school before he could play again. So those would be at least two roster changes forced onto us. After season five, I was completely fine with playing ADC again. I had no. Um no thought in my mind to role swap. I wasn't thinking about it, I didn't really care for it. I just thought I'm the best in my role or in my opinion and I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. So I ended up talking to Ben or Twig uh, just about what his plans were because I always respected him a lot and we were going through players that we wanted in every role and people who we thought were good and I was like, or I was just thinking in my head there's a lot of ADCs that I think are really, really talented player that, players that I could see myself playing with. And I didn't feel that way about the mid laners as much because a lot of them had retired or said they weren't gonna play next season. Well, and Mike kind of just DMs me and goes, hey, listen, this is a situation in order for us to get the best team. Are you willing to swap to mid? And at first I was a little bit hesitant because I didn't know who would take my position. And like, you know, when you, when you think you're the best in a role, you know, replacing yourself, so to speak, is a little hard on your mind. I remember we had this talk when I was going to join the team and he was telling me that he was confident that to give me the ADC position and then transfer to mid. And uh, I kind of had doubts at the beginning because I know that mid is kind of different. It's really, mages and hunters are kind of really different. So I was not really confident, but in the end, I, I just I just thought that as, a, as an ADC that he was, I'm pretty sure he could transfer to me, so he, he did it and did it very well. I was super confident that it would work. Everyone else had their doubts, but I, I just had no doubt in my head. I just knew he would be fine. I didn't think it would happen as quick as it did. Um, I expected there to be a bit of a maturation process, but that didn't end up happening. I think Max has made a tweet about it, like, I think all of us truly think it as well. I think if we can get over Sanguine, which is honestly, the e should be the easiest match for us, then we, we should just win Worlds. You know, we should win that game pretty handedly and it should be a good start to the tournament for us, momentum-wise. This is the Smite World Championship. Multiple players moving their lives across the world all culminates here at the Georgia World Congress Center. Eight teams, three days, one hammer. It's just a matter of who's going to raise it. Our competitors have taken the stage. Team Rival versus Sanguine Kelly. This is going to be bombastic. Polar Bear Mike has the aggression, has the Sunder, pulls him in with the Cobra's Kiss, and there's the first blood of the Spite World Champion. 
championship. Some rival are just unrelentless here. But Arco puts wrong you into the dirt, Captain Twig. Vlad and Shinto as well. Twig gets up a great two-man taunt. What a play for PBU. Knocked up the thunder there again. And Panda Cat gets the kill. Melted under Arco's damage. Fine, okay. Not done getting aggressive. And they're gonna go right for the Titan Rotoli. Totally. You might be right. Rival want to make their way to the semifinals. They're done with Sang. Are you coming down there? No, not really. That's good. Get out here. Get over, man. Wait, really? Yeah. Come on in. Whoa, you just shocked me. What that? You always shocked me as well. I'm getting in there. That's what I'm saying. Are we going to get another fucking Benji finals in Worlds? Holy shit. Nope, because they're going to lose to SK. The thing with the scary about United and SK is that they're playing like they have nothing to lose. Because they don't have anything to lose, like what are they going to lose, like fucking fans who thought they'd get first rounded? So towards the beginning of the year, um, Max, um, Mike and uh, Alec were all already like going to the gym pretty regularly. And like we got, became really good friends at the start. I mean it just became a natural hobby that we started. It kind of inspired me because when Ben first came here, he was really small. Like he, he was a tall guy, but he was very thin. Like he, did, he wasn't a muscular person. I don't think he'd ever been to the gym before. Um, and to see his like transformation, it's been a really big inspiration for me to see them like make so much progress. It's the main thing we do together as a team. It's a great time basically for us to bond without us having to think about work at all, really. Um, I was going through a, a bad time this year. Um, my uh, grandpa ended up passing away and then a week later my dog, my family dog that we'd have had throughout the year ended up having to get put down as well. Um, and it was like a really hard time for me. I was honestly depressed at the time. Um, and I remember one thing Ben did was he came up to me while I was at the computer and he said, why don't you just come to the gym? It will help you feel better, like you can work out with me. And that, that like something clicked in my mind and it, that just like instantly made me wake up and like realize that like I have people around me supporting me. Oh, it's, it's got his confidence so much higher now. Like he's constantly messaging me like, oh, I, I did this, I'm so happy. And I'm like, he randomly write, he sent me a message at while I'm at work next to my boss, my man boobs are going away. And I'm like, oh, that's great, honey. Like I'm sitting next to my boss. <laughs> um, it, it's, he's been really confident and it seems like the like team synergy is it's it's better because like he can they're getting closer they're bonding over something other than smite Alec, what, you want the let's fucking go? It's all night. It's all game night. Let's go. Let's fucking go! Let's go! It is indeed time for game number one of your semifinals. And Panda Cat finds the first blood. Comes knocking on the door there in the mid lane. And Rival on the board first. Rival secure the fire giant. They've been in control the entirety of this game. Killer Panda Cat makes the rotation and Rival finds Let's go, Alec! That's what I'm talking about, baby! Captain Twig drops the ultimate, but they found one more kill as Arkle shows up for a Titan downhill. Arkle finds come himself come a double now. kill. There's Team Rival striking first. There we go, baby. There we go. That's one, baby. That's one, baby. Let's go. 
That's fucking one! Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, okay, that's what I'm talking about. All right, listen, good start. They have no idea how to play the early game. Do it the same fucking way. We made a, yeah, we made a couple mistakes. I think we pushed the tempo a little bit more. I like that draft, we're chilling. We got some nerves out on some bad plays. We're good, we're good. That potential. Oh, trick sticks dead, baby. Our goal found himself first blood. This is the turn polar bear, Mike. When he's feeling himself, chasing down. Keep it up, baby. Keep it up. Keep it up. Who needs the spit with twigs hitting like that? World Weaver comes through and variety evaporates. Rival commanding lead the game. Look at PBM feeling himself. They're up 2 0. It's all of us. Okay, so everyone have it in your head. Just play the lead slow, dude. They're not making plays. Just keep playing slow. Play smart. Easy fucking for you. Desert Fury gets rival on the board. The no knockup. There for PBF with the knockup. The slow. The Desert Fury. Oh! Pandacat has the Aegis. Pandacat repositions Arkham. Puts Kill Go Fred in a great bullet trick stake. Make that one. Oh, my fucking bad. Looking to put this one to bed. Pandacat Arkham still up. That's the DS side. And rival. They need minions. I think this team is a very special team um, in that the guys, um, I think they genuinely like each other. Like Rivals' relationship with each other is really unique. Um, because they're outside of playing, they're all friends, like they want to be together. I would say Rival, even still, are just the best team in the league at, at working as a team. I don't think anyone else plays all five together quite the way that, that Team Rival does. I think that that goes a really long way um, when you're in these types of finals. Welcome everyone to the Alienware Lounge here for the 2019 Smite World Championships Grand Look so dominant through every game they've played so far this tournament. While on Asker, on the other hand, have dropped a few games, but I feel like they've improved through the tournament. I feel like they finally found how they want to play now, so they're super scary team here in the finals. You know, Rival has gotten here without a pot, uh, pothole in the road, but SK Gaming has had to maneuver around hurdles, has had to turn corners, has had to jump fences, and they've done it every single step of the way. Here's the one. Around the back comes the Omar and Pandas beats it up. Sky goes fine, okay. Looking at Bella, Aaron Bella walled off. But the extra bit of sustain for Paul will allow him to get the ult away. Neil Ma in trouble, but gets the last breath off, but it's not under the right target. Paul oh, oh, gets the oh, 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 knock up. FG's in Paul, boys. Strike for what can tell you now.
Cavalry charges there and Twig's looking for an escape route or is he? He might go back in because backup's on the way. Good old from Paul there, Mike at the right time. Will at least get him away. And Panic X leans up Paul. The overaggression from SK is punished. Sam back over to his right hand side looking for Fine. Okay, they've got him in execute range, but Fine still has ult. And meanwhile, here comes a rotation from Twig. Remember, there's some sustain in there if you need it. And the shred is good enough to kill him. Oh, and Fine, okay, Rupert of Bel Air. The up down in that situation was good. And Captain Twig gets himself a double kill. Fine here, Gak attempts onto Bel Air. Mike's on the way too. And Bel Air is in a lot of trouble here, surrounded by four members. They're looking good, man. I mean, they are right on the edge. I think that they've got a really good shot at doing it right here. And their momentum is going to be at an all-time high should they win this game, knowing that they're just one game away. I think the way I would describe Rival is explosive. They're a team that has all of this potential and all of this talent on the roster, but sometimes lets that lets the, the cart get ahead of the horse, so to speak. From my perspective, during the middle Phoenix Siege, uh, it felt really horrible. I'd had my ultimate forced uh, by Rajin on the right flank, uh, the right Phoenix, and I kind of came back uh, all the way around. I looped around back to mid, and I saw Thor get a big dunk, and I wanted to blink and heal my teammates, but instead I blinked into a Xing Tian ult and died instantly. Um, and I mean, it was a huge turning point literally because I felt like I had zero impact during the fight uh, and if I had just stayed back and healed my team rather than blinking in uh, it would have been gone very differently. Those kind of games are really hard to come back from um, when you're 12k up uh, it then leads them to being on match point it's game finals like nerves were like obviously high at that point pressure was like on us all um, and I think it probably tilted everyone even if it didn't like outwardly show, I think everyone was probably a bit, you know, on edge from that. Even though we lost, I just wanted to say thank you to Mike because Mike gave me the chance to um, play with him again, the opportunity to play with him again, obviously after the United uh, thing and changing roles and stuff. And I, I think it just it, like it, it just meant a lot because the amount of trust he had in me um, to just switch roles and you know just play with him again, no matter like what the cost was, kind of. Um, and it really did just mean like a lot. And I think Mike's like one of my like he's he's going to be one of my best friends for the rest of my life. Yeah, so something I believe in quite heavily, especially coming from a background where I follow sports a lot, is that if you take the greatest like players of all time in a traditional sport, let's just say, you know, basketball and Michael Jordan, who's almost unanimously considered the best player ever, like he has six rings and that's like unheard of and you know, he did it within like a seven, uh, I think it was a seven or eight year, eight year span, um, which is like insane. But I mean, he played near 20 years, right? So like a third of the years that you're in the league you win and that's like an un like that precedent is like untouchable 
To win a championship in general is really difficult. To do it a majority of the league or the years that you play in the league is like pretty much impossible. Like it just doesn't happen. So to win like once every five years or whatever would be a good rate. I don't get too stressed anymore about like results. If I lose, I lose. I can still rest assured that I'm I'm good enough. Um, and like, you can always make excuses for why you lose, but um, you can always just look forward and try to fix them going forward. And I can guarantee that I'll win eventually. I've got probably a, a few more years in me where I'm really passionate and I care about winning. So, um, I mean, it feels okay, but. I'll never really feel accomplished until I win, uh, maybe more than once.